I love my car. I love coffee. I love my iPad. I love nature. We use the word love so freely. We say we love toast, we love coffee, we love people, we love nature. But also, with the same word, we say that we love our husband, we love our wife, we love our parents, and we love God. We also say that God is love. No subject is more discussed, written about, or sung about than love. Love is the greatest gift anyone could receive. Love makes us more fulfilled, it makes us more happy, and it makes us feel more alive. What exactly is love? The English word for love does not do it justice. So for us to understand what love is, we need to look to the ancient Greeks and their understanding of the word love. For them, there were four words that described what we understand to be love. The first one is storge or storg, which is a natural appreciation or liking. The second one is philia, which is a natural brotherly or sisterly love or a friendship. The third one is eros, which is a natural sexual attraction or a sexual love. And then there's the fourth, which is agape, which is an unconditional divine love. Agape is the love that God is and loves us with. He has created us to love others with this same love and has given us a desire to be loved with this unconditional love. Hey Siri, define love. Love means a strong feeling of affection. It is a usual misunderstanding to confuse agape love with feelings. You see, feelings come and feelings go, but agape love is from God. It is infinite. It stays forever and is infinitely more precious than feeling. St. Thomas Aquinas describes agape love as willing the good of the other. It is something, therefore, we will, something we do, and not necessarily something we feel. You see, we choose to love, but are not necessarily responsible for our feelings. Just imagine, for example, a couple about to get married. The groom is standing there at the church, at the top of the aisle, waiting for his wife-to-be to approach him. As he sees her walking up the aisle, tears stream down his face. He is in love. At that moment, his heart is full of the feeling of love. He will do anything he can to uphold the other person and to will the good of his wife to be. But give it a few weeks after the honeymoon and the first arguments start to arise. And at that point when the feelings of love are not necessarily there at that moment, it is even there that they need to will the good of the other. They need to serve one another and choose to love even when feelings are not there. Kind of like this older couple here. Jesus had different feelings for different people, but he loved them all equally and absolutely. 
Jesus gave 100% on the cross when he was led by love and not by feeling that moment when he laid down his life for you and for me we as Christians are called to do the same to lay down our lives for others to will the good of others even when our feelings tell us otherwise some time ago I wrote a song about this which I will link below about how God chose to lay down his life in spite of the difficulties no greater love than this has no one than to lay down their lives for a friend